So for the gravity and Kepler's law experiment, you're going to be working with a simulation that looks like this. And you're not going to need to write very much in your lab notebook because instead of writing up a proper lab like normal, you're instead going to be working your way through a Moodle quiz on the website. So nothing in your lab notebook for now, just work your way through the quiz. Now you almost don't need an introductory video for this experiment because the quiz actually has screen captures of the simulation and tells you exactly what numbers to change and what to do. But I'll work through the steps with you anyway just so you have a rough idea of what it's going to look like. I will note, however, that the simulation has been updated a little bit since the screen captures in the quiz were taken, so it looks a little bit different in the quiz, but not so different that you won't be able to figure out what you're supposed to do. So to begin with, to run the simulation, you just click Start, and there's also a Stop and a Reset button. So if I click Start, the planets start doing stuff, very interesting looking, I can stop it and reset it as well. Now the first thing that the quiz tells you to do is first, over here on the sidebar, click on Show Grid. So that shows the grid lines, and you also want to take this slider bar here and move it from the middle of the range right over to Accurate. The next thing that the quiz asks you to do is first double check that the number of bodies is set to 2, and the second thing you want to do is start changing these numbers down here. And it tells you exactly what things to change it to. So it will have you change the mass of the Sun to 500, and the mass of the pink planet to 1, and then it tells you to move the position, the X position of the Sun, over to minus 300, and then move the position of the pink planet over to plus 200 and then everything else should be set to zero. And there are a few things here that you do need to change to zero. So you do that, and now you're ready to begin. So first let me point out this timer down here at the bottom. So when I click Start, the timer is going to start counting up, and when I click Stop, it stops. And I'll reset now. So what you're going to be doing to begin with is you're going to time how long it takes for the pink planet to crash into the yellow sun. So to do that, what you do is you click Start, the pink planet is going to start moving towards the sun, and as soon as you see it crash into it, there will be a yellow flash, you click stop. So as soon as I see the flash, I click stop, and then I've got this time down here. And that's the value that you'll need to enter in your quiz. And by the way, if you ever find that you want to change numbers down here but they're all grayed out, that just means you need to click the reset button. So what the quiz will have you do next is it's going to play around with having you change the mass of the pink planet and seeing if that changes the time it takes for the pink planet to crash into the sun, and then also changing the mass of the sun and seeing if that makes a difference to the time. And all through that process, the quiz is going to be asking you to make predictions. So it'll say, predict what will happen to the time when you make the pink planet heavier. Predict what you think will happen to the time when you make the mass of the sun heavier. So you make predictions, and then you run the experiment, and then you say what you actually saw, and whether you verified your prediction or not. So that's fairly straightforward. I'll leave that to you. So let me show you what you have to do next in the simulation. So in that first part of the experiment, you were studying collisions. In the next one, you're going to be studying orbits. So it asks you to change these values down here. So to begin with, make sure you click Reset. The mass of the Sun is going to stay at 500, but you're going to change the mass of the pink planet now to 0 0.001, so very small. You're also going to change the position of the Sun to zero, so it's right at the center of the screen, and the pink planet will stay at 200. Then the quiz is going to have you start playing around with the velocity of the pink planet. So that's these two values down here. You can either give it an x velocity towards or away from the Sun, or a y velocity up or down relative to the Sun and it asks you whether you'll need an x or a y velocity in order to get the planet to orbit around the Sun, rather than crashing into it. So you'll play around with changing your x velocity, say to plus 100, and see what happens, and then you change it to minus 100, and again, see what happens, click Start, see whether it crashes into the Sun or starts to orbit it, and then you'll do the same thing for the y velocity, so you'll set this to 0, and change your y velocity from 100 to negative 100 and see what effect it has when you click Start. And once you've determined whether you need an X velocity or a Y velocity to get the pink planet to orbit the Sun, then it's going to have you start changing the values in order to find what the minimum velocity is that you have to give the pink planet in order to have it orbit the Sun rather than crashing into it. So I'm going to hide my values down here and type this in. And now when I click Start, this is what they're asking for the minimum velocity that you can give the pink planet so that it orbits the Sun rather than crashing into the Sun. 
Then, after you've found the minimum velocity that gives you an orbit, they tell you to continue increasing that velocity until you get a perfectly circular orbit. Now, a lot of the elliptical orbits look pretty circular, so I just want to point out that it's only exactly circular when the distance from the Sun to the pink planet is the same on both sides of the Sun. So right now the pink planet is one, two grid steps over. It's only a circular orbit when the pink planet goes through one, two grid steps over here. So it has to go exactly through these grid lines right here. Otherwise, I don't have exactly a circular orbit yet. So you would keep increasing your velocity until such time as you get a completely circular orbit. In other words, it's going exactly through these grid lines over here on the other side. So two grid steps over in both directions. So you keep increasing your velocity until you find that. And then they ask you to keep increasing that velocity and you talk about the shape of the orbit you get when the velocity is larger than the speed that gives you a perfectly circular orbit. Then they have you change the number of bodies from two to three. So now you've got this blue planet in here as well. And they have you move it to one half the radius of the pink planet, so 100. And you can change its velocity to zero for now, because what they ask you to do is to go back to the speed that gave you a perfectly circular orbit and change the blue planet's velocity to that as well. And they ask you to make some predictions here. Are you going to get a circular orbit for this planet too? So you'll play around with the velocity of the blue planet too and see what it does. And the quiz asks you some general questions about the shape of orbits. So the quiz steps you through all of this fairly well. I'll leave all of that up to you. So let's see what the next part of the quiz is about. So in this part of the experiment, we're going to get rid of the blue planet. So over here, you go back to two bodies. So we just have the pink planet. And we're going to change the mass of the sun to 200. But we'll leave the mass of the planet set to 0 0.001. And we're also going to change the x position for the pink planet to 50, so a very small orbit. And they tell you to set your initial y velocity on the pink planet to 150. Now what you're going to be doing in this part of the experiment is you're going to be taking data for a graph. So you're going to take several measurements and make a graph out of them later. The quantities that we're going to be graphing are the orbital radius and the velocity that gives you a circular orbit, so only a circular orbit. Now we're going to be changing the radius of the pink planet in increments of 25, which means it's usually not going to be sitting conveniently on one of the crossbars of the grid lines. So in order to figure out when you've got exactly a circular orbit, you're going to need the ruler. So over here on the sidebar, you want to click on the box that says Show Ruler. And that provides you with this ruler, and you can grab the yellow end, move it around, and you want to drag it until the little red cross on this end is right on top of your pink planet, as accurately as you can. Then you want to grab the other end, and you want to move this little cross on this side so that it's 2 times 50 over from the pink planet. So 2 times 50 is 100, so I set it as accurately as I can to 100. Now the idea here is that the pink planet has a radius of 50 right now, and it's only going to have an exactly circular orbit when it's going through the point 50 units over on this side. So I've set the length of my ruler to be 2 times 50, 100, and that means when I set the velocity of the pink planet such that the orbit passes through the little red cross on this side of the sun, that's when I know I have an exactly circular orbit. So if I click Start, you see that it does orbit the sun, and it kind of looks circular, but it's actually an ellipse because it's not going through the red cross on the ruler. So I stop this and reset it, and I would just keep adjusting my velocity until I do get a circular orbit. And of course, I know what value it's supposed to be. So this is what you're looking for. So right now, the orbit is passing exactly through the red cross on the ruler. And that means I've got exactly a circular orbit. And so the quantity you would write down in your data table would be 50 for the radius and whatever velocity you found for the orbital velocity that gives you a circular orbit. So that's your first data point. But now you want to increase the radius of the pink planet from 50 to 75. So now the pink planet's over here, but I still want to figure out what velocity gives me a perfectly circular orbit. So I have to grab the pink end of this ruler again, and again put the crossbars right on top of the pink planet, and then I have to think, okay, what's 2 times 75? That's 150. So I grab the other end of the ruler and stretch it out to exactly 150 on this side. 
And again, I'm looking for the velocity that's going to give me a perfectly circular orbit, which means the pink planet will pass through the little red cross of the ruler, because I have set the ruler to be 2 times 75 wide. So I would keep adjusting my velocity down here until I can get that circular orbit again. And then again, once I've got that value, I increase the radius of the pink planet to 100, grab the ruler, put the cross right on top of the pink planet, and then say, okay, 2 times 100 would be 200. I stretch this guy out to be exactly 200. And then again, play around with the velocity until I get a perfectly circular orbit. So when you're done, you're going to have a table of values where you've got the orbital radius going from 50 to 75 to 100 to 125 and so on. And for each of those, you're going to find the orbital velocity that you set down here, which gives you a perfectly circular orbit. Then you're going to graph your data and check whether the data verifies Newton's version of Kepler's third law. And I've got a separate video for you to watch on how you do that.